Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hannah. I'm a mom to one toddler, one 17 month old boy. And today I am going to be talking about my recovery from labor and delivery with him. If you watched my labor and delivery story, you would know, but if you didn't, I labored and delivered with an infection in the uterus called chorioamnionitis, choreo for short. This affected my recovery a little bit and definitely my breastfeeding journey, but we're not gonna touch the breastfeeding experience just yet. That'll be a different video. We're just gonna stick with my recovery from labor and delivery. So this video took a little bit of time for me to plan. I was trying to figure out the best way to organize my thoughts, how I wanted to present what I went through to you guys and I settled on breaking up my recovery experience in the hospital and at home and I'm going to be talking about both parts today. With all that being said, let's just go ahead and get started. Recovery starts the second after the baby comes out and um, actually I'm going to pause really quick. My first thought whenever Cade came out was there really was a baby in there. And yeah, I just cried and everything. My husband cried. My husband um, was able to tell me the gender of our baby. It was just very sweet. And then another thing I remember, which was just really weird and I kind of didn't expect, but they sat my bed up and I was leaning against the back of the bed, of course, and I was holding Cade and I wanted to look down at him. So I picked my head up off of the bed and it just felt like my head was gonna go straight through the wall. I have no idea why that happened, but. But it did. Another thing that was happening kind of right before Cade came out, but it happened, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour after Cade was here, I was uncontrollably shaking and nobody had said anything to me about it. I want to say that one of the nurses did say that it should calm down, but I honestly can't remember if that actually happened or not. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that just has to do with your hormones and like the flood of all of everything that's happening. So that was really weird and I didn't expect it, but I guess that's just part of giving birth and being postpartum at that point. So the first little section is while I was in the hospital and then there's kind of two parts to this. So there's right after birth and you're still in the labor and delivery room and then there's the recovery room where you are there for three days i think it was and then there's the house we'll start with right after birth the first thing that happened was i had to get stitches i tore very little it was still enough to have to get some stitches and i remember while the doctor was stitching me up she was like can you feel that and because i was like mm. but i think i was more like not feeling so great because i was sick it wasn't necessarily the pulling that i had felt it was just like pressure of pulling that i had felt it wasn't anything bad or anything it was just i did not feel good at all so i just wanted to lay there and not be talked to and just keep my head back on the pillow because it just felt like it was gonna fly through the wall and it hurt and i had a headache and i think the majority of the headache and me hurting so bad was from the infection and being sick and having a fever with it. After they cleaned up Cade, got him measured and weighed and all of the stuff that they do with your newborn, I said I had to go to the bathroom. I had to pee really bad. My nurse, Nurse Becky, she was like, okay, we're gonna, we'll take you to the bathroom. Just, you're gonna need to go slow because of the epidural. You may not actually have all of your feeling back in your leg. That is kind of true. I mostly felt like I did, like I could move all of my body parts on my legs but then i went to sit up and again i was feeling not so great and i turned and i was like oh i need a second so i sat there for a minute and then i was like no i really have to pee so like i need to speed this thing up <laughs> so i stood up and i was like whoa so i leaned on nurse becky oh my gosh nurse becky she was my favorite and she walked me to the bathroom and this is where you know they gave you the underwear and the big huge pad and the ice pack and tucks and then that freeze stuff that they give you that you can spray. Becky also informed me of how to clean it up down there without hurting anything and basically just pat you pat it dry. <laughs> so that's what I did because I didn't want to ruin anything and also it was sore and it was like I was patting and I was like I can't tell what is what down there. It's very traumatic for your vagina and I mean I, I figured that I knew that but I didn't realize like how bad and i never looked at what my vagina looked like i was too scared i could just tell by feeling that it did not look normal anyway so she gets my underwear with the pad and the ice pack and the tucks all ready to go and i stood up and i turned around and the amount of blood that there was 
was like a murder scene. It was terrifying. I did not think that your body could expel that much blood at one time. Like it was all over the seat and just like the water completely red. You couldn't even tell that I had peed. And I'm sure that blood trailed from the bed to the bathroom. I'm sure. I don't know how it wouldn't have because I didn't have a pad on or anything. I was still naked. But I didn't look, so I don't know for sure. Oh, I do remember it took me a while to pee because Nurse Becky was like, are you doing okay? And I was like, yeah, I just, I, I'm trying to pee, but it doesn't feel the same, so I'm j I just need a second. And she's like, oh, okay, that's fine. Don't, don't, don't rush or anything. And I was like, okay. That's good. At least nothing's wrong with that. The first time going to the bathroom and standing up after giving birth, whoa. After the bathroom fiasco, we had about an hour, an hour and a half to bond with our new little baby and just get to know him and I could feed him and all of that stuff. I also believe I had my first uterus massage. I think I actually had it before I got up to go to the bathroom. Yeah, that was not fun. The first one definitely took me by surprise and I was like, whoa. Yeah, and lots of blood gush. That was not fun. Anyway, bonding. So at this point, my parents were able to come in and meet little baby Kate. And then they left and then um, one of the nurses came back in and was like, there are some carolers here. Would you like them to come in and sing you some carols? And I was like, what? Okay, sure. So they came in and they sang some songs for us. And it was a little awkward because I was naked. I mean, like, I... I had the gown on and everything, but like, I don't know. I just felt super naked still, but it was really sweet and we got some pictures. That part was so cool, but I do remember just not feeling so great. I I just wanted to like close my eyes and rest, but I didn't want to close my eyes and rest because I just wanted to stare at my little baby that I had. But anyway, good things had to come to a close and we had to move on into the recovery room. So yeah, let's talk about that. So when I got into the recovery room, I'm pretty sure this is when this started. It might have happened earlier, but they started me on ibuprofen and Tylenol. I think it was like every eight hours you got Tylenol, every six hours you got ibuprofen, and it was constant. Like, I always had some kind of pain medicine going into my system, which I was very thankful for because I was hurting. And I'll get to that in a second. Along with the pain meds, I had to have antibiotics into the IV that was in my wrist. And this part was the least fun part and this was all because of choreo whenever you give birth and you don't have choreo you won't have to have antibiotics going in through your system this got very annoying after a while because not only were they coming in at night like for the pain medicine if the antibiotic didn't fall in line with the pain medicine they had to come in again and give me the i or give me the medicine through the IV and it hurt after a while. I believe that the that the ibuprofen and Tylenol were also through the IV because I don't remember having to take anything orally until my IV line broke. So what happened there was I think we were on our second day. The day before we were supposed to leave, the nurse was giving me my um, antibiotic and I had gotten used to it the feeling of it going through my veins and my hand and up my arm and it just being cold and like thick and stiff and everything like that and she's like typing everything in doing her um paperwork that she needed to do all of a sudden my hand got my my wrist got very cold and i was like what so i looked down and it was leaking and i was like um i think my IV broke and she was like, oh, yep, sure enough. So she took my IV out. So then another nurse came in that was like a phlebotomist, I think that's how you say it, um, that they could find veins and stuff. She came in to redo my IV line. Ugh. If you watch my labor and delivery story, I was poked several, several times and I had massive bruises everywhere because of it. This nurse was trying to find any vein at all and so she was going for one like up here. She had already tried one spot um, and then she moved on to that spot. As she was doing that, Nurse Becky comes flying into my recovery room and was like, do not stick her with a needle again. She wasn't in trouble. <laughs> I don't know why she said to not do it, but um, my I guess the doctor said that I didn't need to have the IV, that I could just take it orally, and I'm assuming it's because of how many times I had gotten stuck the night before when I was in labor, but I'm so thankful that I didn't have to do that. The only problem is, is then I had to take all of the medication orally, all of the ibuprofen, all of the Tylenol, and the antibiotic, which was a horse pill. I had to have it quartered, okay? I couldn't just like half it, I, it had to be quartered. So that kind of sums up what the choreo affected. That and my uterus being tender a little bit, which is what I'm gonna talk about next. I did have um, 
the uterus massage every shift change it wasn't every hour it wasn't every 30 minutes it was every shift change after the first one had happened in the labor and delivery room i was prepared and then all the nurses were like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i have to do this i was like it's okay like you have to do it it's fine and i just breathed through it and it was okay so maybe that's a tip for you if you have had a kid before and you didn't like it or you're about to and you're a little bit nervous about that just breathe it is going to hurt but just breathe you'll be okay we're gonna go back to that second day that middle day that I'm in the hospital and at this point I was like I need to take a shower so I asked my nurse when I when I could and she was like oh at any time and I was confused because I had the IV for the majority of the second day I didn't know if I could take a shower or not with the IV in so I stood up and I had to brush my hair for my labor and delivery I had put my hair up in a bun uh, that was a mistake I should have put it in a braid because the bun and me like tossing and turning and just laying on my back and like doing the pushes and everything it caused a huge knot and that has nothing to do with recovery but I had to stand up and brush my hair out my hair is super long so anyway I was standing up and combing out this huge rat's nest in my hair. It might have been only five minutes, but I remember my core hurting so bad, my back hurting so bad, my stomach, my uterus, and just everything. I was like, I have to sit down. I could just feel like my muscles were so loose and all of my insides were just like flopping around because they'd been so squished and now they have room to be. I go to take my shower and it was a really long shower because I was hurting really bad. I ended up taking the shower and changing my underwear situation and hopping back into the bed and being a lot more comfortable. I was still in a lot of pain but I was a lot more comfortable just because I was clean. The only thing that really stood out was how my vagina felt. At this point it felt like it was getting kind of tight. Not itchy, not yet just tight and um kind of like stingy or burny like i had gotten like a carpet burn or something like that i think at this point i had no more ice packs left and i had asked my nurse could i have another ice pack and she was like you can but um you shouldn't need it after you know 24 hours and i was like okay well i still want an ice pack <laughs> so i don't know what that was about after going to the bathroom a couple times i realized that i wasn't bleeding very much watching different youtube videos of my postpartum experience what to expect postpartum and all of that stuff i was prepared to be heavy bleeding for a very long time after birth like i don't know a few weeks or whatever but i noticed that i was barely filling my pad like i could have used a panty liner i think i would have been okay with that and so i asked my nurse where's all the blood and she just kind of like looked at me and was like what do you mean i was like well i mean i thought there would be a lot more blood than what there is and she's like oh no you're fine the, like it's okay you don't always bleed very much or sometimes you do bleed bleed a lot but it was a little i guess off-putting from what i had prepared myself for so now let's talk about the emotional slash mental state that i was in now i did not have postpartum depression thankfully however <laughs> i had a rough few days after giving birth i did not sleep one bit in the hospital after giving birth and the sleep that i did get during labor and delivery was very bad sleep it wasn't anything good at all i was super exhausted super tired just completely out of it that takes a toll on your emotions and how you think and what you're feeling and i remember that that night the second night into that last day that we were going to be there they took Cade, or maybe it was the first night i'm not really sure but they took Cade to the nursery so we could sleep and i remember rob fell asleep instantly love that for him okay was great me on the other hand could not fall asleep and it wasn't because like i was just awake i was exhausted i wanted to sleep but every time i closed my eyes i thought about losing Cade. i thought about somebody stealing Cade. i thought about Cade getting hurt and just i wanted to be around Cade. i'm not i'm never gonna be a good enough mother i can't do this i'm in too much pain how is this gonna work it was not very good and i wanted to cry i do remember while the nurses were gone i let a couple tears like well up but once they welled i wiped them away and i was like i'm not crying i'm not crying i don't want to be mistaken for having postpartum depression i know i don't i know i need to get through this and i will be just fine so yeah i didn't cry and i feel like that just like cannonballed into um being at home which we'll get to in a second but first of all before you go home they make you watch a sleep safety video and a shaken baby syndrome video i'm gonna pause really quick i was in a lot of like 
pain like core pain i wish i would have had like some kind of belly band um at this point because whenever the nurse was walking me to the car it was very fast and i wasn't in a wheelchair i was like running and i was like oh my gosh i'm hurting so bad so anyway that was a side tangent we go home and we decided that we wanted to run to walmart and so we did why i don't know it was stupid because my core was in no shape to be walking around standing up i don't know i think after the three days of being in the hospital i just needed to do something so we went anyway we made it home and that was a mistake that i have learned my lesson on i'm not doing that ever again so we get home i'm on the couch holding bubba loving him feeding him everything like that and we needed dinner so rob went out to go get food and i was holding kate and remember i hadn't fallen asleep at all the entire time i was at the hospital and one of the things that was in those videos that we had to watch was don't hold your baby and go to sleep at the same time like don't sit on the couch and sleep with your baby in your arms and what do you know i did that so rob comes home and i kid you not it was literally for two minutes that i was out but rob comes in and he sees me and he wakes me up and i immediately start bawling because i'm like i'm a bad mom i just did exactly what i'm not supposed to do i felt the absolute worst about it and rob was like it's okay it is okay you're gonna be just fine it was one time needless to say i don't think it really it wasn't that big a deal it was just my mental state my emotional state were just all out of whack at that point we're gonna move on to wednesday so i gave birth on saturday we came home on monday and wednesday night was the first night that i was able to fall asleep and stay asleep without hysterically crying until like three four o'clock in the morning <laughs> that was the worst i could prepare myself for how i was going to feel physically how all of the things were going to like shift in my body how things were going to hurt down there and like how breastfeeding was gonna hurt and all of that stuff but i could not and i was not prepared for the emotional and mental state that i would have yes it probably would have helped if i slept in the hospital but i didn't and i don't know i just think that this emotional part my hysterically crying for three for three nights in a row and not being able to sit to fall asleep and stay asleep that almost makes me scared to have another baby that part not not the labor and delivery of the next baby not the pain that labor is none of that not even getting choreo again okay i'm i'm a little i'm i'm actually a lot afraid of getting choreo again but that's aside the point like this was worse like this i couldn't prepare myself i wasn't prepared and nobody could prepare me I just didn't understand why I was crying so bad. I wasn't depressed. I just, I needed sleep and I couldn't get to sleep because I kept worrying about Cade. I kept worrying about what life's gonna look like. I kept worrying about me and Rob and just all of these things. So take it from me, it's okay to cry. And it's okay to cry yourself to sleep for the first couple nights because I had to. But obviously if you think it's worse than, you know, just a couple nights, get help. Moving on to a couple weeks, basically we're done dealing with the emotional and all of the super painful things. I guess we're getting closer to the six weeks mark. My stitches were up to that point. My stitches were getting itchy and I just wanted to scratch them so bad. I didn't. My core still just felt really bad. I had headaches and they gave me a super strength ibuprofen prescription um, and I took that I'm pretty sure every day. For those six weeks and a little bit after because the headaches were intense the back pain the stomach pain just you know the core pain was pretty intense and i just needed help to not feel so bad eventually it did wear off i didn't have as many headaches my stomach my back all went back to normal so let's say we're past that pretty much yeah the stitches were just getting super itchy and my core just kind of felt weak like i could stand i could carry some things but it really hurt like if i was holding bubba and rocking him and him sleeping it hurt to stand for more than like five six seven eight minutes like that i had to sit with him but then a little more time went by my core got stronger my back got stronger i had my six week checkup and everything looked good down there i was good to go and um yeah and then we just kept living life and here we are today <laughs> uh, 17 months later and i'm just now getting to this postpartum story but yeah that that is my story and, and i hope you guys can prepare yourselves a little bit if you're about to give birth um if not i just hope that this was a nice story for you to hear <laughs> so 
anyway thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button the like button the notification bell so you're notified every time i put on